Welcome to Electron Online. I get a lot of questions about mirrors and lenses. Questions such as, what happens when the object is placed at the focal point? What happens when you move it to the left, move it to the right, things like that. And I thought it might be a good idea to put a set of videos together to explain some of these things in a more general aspect, more general perspective. So that's what we're going to do here, starting with this first video. So first of all, what we're going to be talking about is two types of lenses converging lenses and diverging lenses, and two types of mirrors, concave mirrors and convex mirrors. Now, the lenses are what we call thin lenses. Later on, we'll do some series on thick lenses, and uh, those are very different. So what are some of the major aspects, some of the key aspects that we have to know about lenses? Well, first of all, typically, we place an object to the left of the lens, and the observer tends to be to the right of the lens. If an image is formed on the other side of the lens, we call that a real image. If an image is formed on the same side of the lens as the object, we call that a virtual image. It's not a real image, it's not really there, it's just virtual, it appears to be there. Same with diverging lenses, we tend to put the object on the left side of the lens, the observer on the right side of the lens. If an object, if an image forms on the same side of the lens as the object on the left side of the lens, we call that a virtual image. If it's on the right side of the lens, we call that a real image. With mirrors, it's a little bit different because rays cannot actually travel through the mirror. They're only reflected by the mirrors. So if the rays bounce against the mirrors, come back and form an image on the same side of the mirror as the object, then we have a real image. So it's really the other way around from lenses. With lenses, we have real images when they're on the other side of the lens. With mirrors, we have real images when they're on the same side of the lens. And when the image is formed on the other side of the mirror, and you might say, well, wait a minute, how can an image form on the other side of the mirror because the rays cannot travel through it? Well, that's because with mirrors, the observer is on the same side of the mirror as the object on the left side of the mirror. It doesn't make a lot of sense for the observer to be on the right side because then you'd be looking at the back of the mirror and you wouldn't be seeing anything. So when observer is here and sees an image that's formed in front of the mirror, then that's a real image. It's really there. But sometimes it appears as if an image is formed on the back side of the mirror and that would then be a virtual image. So it's exactly opposite from what it is with lenses. Now, how do we determine the focal points and the focal lengths of lenses and mirrors? Well, we do that by imagining that we have parallel rays of light moving from the left towards the lens or towards the mirror. In the case of the lenses, the rays will go through the lens. In the case of a converging lens, the rays will converge to a single point where parallel lines move through the lens and then converge on the other side, that's called a focal point, and the distance from the lens to that point is called a focal length. In the case of a converging lens, since the focal point is on the other side of the lens, we call that a positive focal length. So we call, we call lenses that are converging, we give them positive focal lengths. On the other hand, when we have diverging lenses, you can see that the rays, when they come to the lens parallel, they will diverge away from the lens, away from what we call the optical axis. The line that we draw through the middle of the lens or through the middle of the mirror here is called the optical axis. You can see then that the rays diverge away from the optical axis and an observer on this side of the lens will look at these rays and say, well, they appear to be coming from this point and so that's a virtual focal point. That's therefore a negative focal length. So the distance from the lens to the focal point is a negative distance for diverging lenses and it's a positive distance for converging lenses. With mirrors, we have a kind of a similar situation. We have these parallel rays of light that bounce off against the mirror. They come back and they come together at the optical axis here. That's a real focal point. We call the focal length a positive distance. The distance from the mirror to where the rays meet, that's called the focal length. With a convex mirror, parallel rays that hit the mirror will bounce back but will diverge away from the optical axis. And so therefore, they will never meet. There's no real focal point, but there is a virtual focal point. Since the observer is in front of the mirror, they see the rays diverging away from the mirror and they appear to be coming from a single point behind the mirror. That's a virtual focal point. So we say that the distance from the mirror 
to the focal point is a negative distance. So that's the difference between the lenses and the mirrors. In general, all the objects are placed on the left side of the mirror or the lens. With a converging lens, the image will typically form on the other side, or no, I shouldn't say that because that's not always the case, but the rays will come together and form a focal point on the other side of the lens, so we call this a positive focal distance. Here, they will diverge away, so they will appear to come from here. That's called a negative distance. Here, with the mirror, they will bounce back and come together at a real point, a real focal point, real focal distance, which is a positive distance. And here, we have the rays diverging away. They appear to be coming from this point, therefore, that's a negative focal distance. So that's a good start with the understanding about lenses and mirrors. What we're going to do in the, in the videos to come is we're going to place objects farther away from the focal point and move the object back and forth to see what happens to the image. Then we're going to take the object and put it between the lens and the focal point and move it back and forth and see what happens. We're going to do the same thing with the diverging lens. We're going to put an object farther away from the focal point and move it back and forth and see what happens. Then we're going to place it between the lens and the focal point, move it back and forth and see what happens. On the lens here, we're going to take the object and move it farther away than the focal point and move it back and forth and see what happens. Then we move it inside the focal point, in other words, between the mirror and the focal point and move it back and forth and see what happens. And then we're going to go over here, we're going to take the object, place it farther away than the focal point and move it back and forth to see what happens and move it between the lens and the focal point and move it back and forth. Now you may say, well, wait a minute, didn't you just tell me that the focal point is behind the lens? So what are we doing here? Well, for a reference point, we're going to take that very same distance, measure it out here and put a dot there and call that the mirror focal point of the real one right there. Well, actually there's a virtual focal point, so the mirror image of the virtual focal point. And here with the diverging lenses, Notice that this is the virtual focal point. Again, we're going to place the object on both sides of it and move it back and forth and see what happens. We want to really get a feel for what happens to the image when the object is moved around at various locations. So stay tuned. We'll start with the converging lens and then we'll work our way through both lenses and both mirrors. And that way we'll get a better understanding of the relationship between the object and the image in all the various situations we can encounter. And that's how it's done.